Hey guys, it's Ray Burns with The Prepared Man. I'm out in the woods today just with some more of my kit. I want to show you just a couple of pieces. We're going to set up a shelter and just take a look at how I do things. This is by no means an innovative way of doing things, but it just happens to be the way that I carry my kit currently. So just stick around. We're going to set up a shelter. We're going to show you a couple of pieces out of my pack and we'll get started in just a sec. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just out here in a uh, old camp spot on the edge of the property here. You can see the fence roll back behind us. And one of the things that I carry typically is an oil skin haversack. And the reason that I carry oil skin over nylon is I can actually carry water in this. I have carried water in this to put out fire and things of that nature if I wanted to. But this this oil skin, uh, I mean, it's it's been through the ringer. I've used it quite a bit. Um, today I don't have my full kit with me. I'm not pulling overnight. It's Sunday. I got to work tomorrow, but I did want to show you just a couple of pieces that I pulled in my kit. And it's really information that I've gained from other people, but I haven't seen it all in one place. So I wanted to share it and I'll try to give credit as I remember who I gained this from. The first thing I wanted to show you something that rides in my shelter kit is these stakes. Now, early on, uh, in his career on Facebook, Dave Canterbury talked about carrying stakes and just for the convenience factor. Also, I know that uh, people like Ray Mears have talked about it quite a bit in some of their videos of just the ease of carrying pre-made stakes or store-bought stakes versus making them in the wild every time. Now, since this is a demo, I just pulled some stakes off the shelf, but I actually do carry stakes 99% of the time when I carry kit. They're either iron or, uh, these types of steaks, these are just cheap, you know, 60, 70 cents a piece steaks. And I also have a nice set of real bright red ones that I carry. Carry some USGI aluminum steaks in the winter time. Just one of those convenient tools that I carry with me that I use in a lot of different ways. I even took a course with uh, Jason Hunt from Camp Craft Outdoors uh, in Wilderness First Aid, in which we use one of these and a plastic bag to do a tourniquet. And it was really effective. So. Jason, if you watch this, uh, I remember that right now. So I carry these stakes. You can see they got a hole on them. I've got a few that's got strings left on them. I've cut them off or something or another. So today I have six. And the reason I have six is for uh, flexibility. I'll always be carrying four. So there's my stakes that I carry. And the other piece I have, uh, I'm gonna chalk this up to a mixture of uh, Corporal's Corner and also Iowa Woodsman from Bushcraft USA, and this is my line kit. Now, I know a lot of people carry a lot of different kinds of line. I carry a line kit, so I don't have to cut up my line, destroy my line, and I have it color-coded by length. So as you can see, as I pull this first tank out of here, you can see it's all daisy chained up, and that was something I was doing a long time ago, but I did notice that Iowa Woodsman does that as well. It's a good way to just keep your line together. I have these bright green lines that I use. These are corner tie-outs for tarps, things of that nature. And I'll show you how long they are roughly. And it is roughly. You can do it exactly if you want to. But this one's one, two, three. They're about eight and a half, nine feet long. And there's one, two, three, four, five, all doubled up and daisy chained together. So I have five and you're thinking square tarp only has four corners, Brett, and you're, you're right. But it also has a center tie out. So that's why I carry five of these. And this is my most handy link. We'll lay those right here and then we'll pan down and go over them again here in just a moment. I also carry a ridge line that's already made up. I have two examples here today. I have a bright orange ridge line that I carry a lot. I'm notorious for running into these things at nighttime, and that's why I'm using bright colors. You're more than welcome to use muted colors should you go this route. I also have some OD and black and things like that, but this is all my bright orange. So this ridge line also has a bowline tied right in it. You can see my bowline knot is already there that I use. And then here's another example, and this one is out of my truck kit that we used recently someplace else. But this is a piece of old multicam and you can see it has the uh, pressics in it as well that Corporal's Corner talked about. 
Also carry a carabiner. This one's a nice and lightweight nylon one. It's just handy. Hang your hat on, shoes up off the ground. There's nothing worse than getting ants in your shoes. Nothing worse. The other length that I carry, and I carry a few of these, uh, let me get my daisy chain pulled back out, is much shorter. And these I call my project length. So these are literally three feet long hanks prepared for there's four of them and these are black i use them in projects a lot these are to tie lashings on chairs or things of that nature where bank line just won't cut it but i just carry four of those they're three feet long another little hank of bank line that i've pulled off some project and left in here here's my bright orange set of those three foot long ones and they already have some bowl inside in them and i have a purple set also that this is out of my truck to get for those three foot hanks and there's four of them as well so let's pan down and i'll break this down to just one simple kit and i'll show you as best i can what this line kit looks like and then i'm going to talk about how i carry it because i'm fixing to change that up so i want to go ahead and talk about it and show you guys as well so give me just a moment i'll reset the camera i'll get you on down here where you can see this line kit so here it is again, guys, and I'll pull out some of my spares and get them out of the way. This is my truck kit I gotta put back in tonight. <clears throat> you can see it's basically composed of three pieces. Now I know Iowa Woodsman's kit was a lot more complex than this, but this is what I find works for me in southeastern Kentucky in the eastern woodland, woodlands and in warm weather. So I carry four three feet long pieces. I typically have a bowling tied in these. I don't currently. So there's just four of those. And a daisy chain for those. You just tie a series of slip knots. It shortens them up, keeps them from getting tangled a lot better than rolling them. And nobody wants to have eight little wads of paracord tied up in their pouch somewhere. There's those. And there's five, eight and a half, nine feet long. Used to carry six feet. I think that's what Iowa Woodsman recommended. And I just uh, always found myself needing a little bit more. So that's why I'm carrying these. Now I'll daisy chain these up as well. We're gonna use these on camera here in a minute. Set up the shelter and I wanna get them ready and reset. So we just tie a series of slip knots and you can see how it's getting shorter. But at the same time, these are all staying together. Got one more in it. There's my short ones. There's my medium. One ridge line. One ridge line with the bowling knot tied in it. Six stakes. Incidental bank line. Sometimes I carry an entire roll. Uh, I'm not doing heavy crafting in most of my kits these days because we just carry so much convenience, uh, especially just camping, that I just carry this. This is about mm, 25, 30 feet. So that's how I carry that. Behind me, I have my simple bedroll. We'll go ahead and clear this line out. We'll go through my bedroll and we're gonna talk about my shelter. Let's get these stakes right over there. My line kit prepped and ready to go. Here is my bedroll. Now, forgive me because I'm, I'm a mixture of timelines, but this is an 18th century bedroll that I carry that I have modified a little bit with modern conveniences. So you can see this is just a tump line that carries over my shoulder or across my chest, which I'll show you guys a little bit later about. This is a Tinsmith's tarp. This one is an oldie. I've carried this tarp a long time. And inside, I have the bare essentials. And it is the bare essentials for me. I have inside this tarp, a wool blanket and that's it. Actually, I have two wool blankets, I'm sorry. I have a small wool blanket that I use underneath me in this large red queen wool blanket that I wrap up in. <clears throat> I will recommend that if you get a chance to buy brand names, uh, vintage brand names, uh, even modern counterparts are not, they're just not tough enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to Leave our bedroll just like this. I just broke it open. We're immediately going to start using our line kit. We're going to set up my two favorite tarp shelters. 
We're gonna set up a plow point and we're gonna set up a lean to. So I'm gonna back the camera off here just so I can film myself setting these up. Probably won't be a lot of audio and uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the simple setup using my line kit, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that blanket string that we hooked earlier with the half hitch on the bite. We're going to put our blankets in. We want to draw this puppy up and actually get that plow point shape that I think a lot of people are a little concerned about and wind up with a diamond shelter. This is currently a diamond shelter. Nothing wrong with a diamond shelter unless you're in rain. Let's do a plow point. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that center tie out up and show you what that looks like. Okay, so now, got to get our blankets out, get them inside. Pull that, those are free. They would go in here. I'll just set those right here because I really want you to see this effect. Now, we're going to tie this to that center tie out. But Brett, your pre-made kit doesn't allow you to reach that far. Sure it does. I have others that I can tie on if I need to. So we're going to do this. This will be a little bit of a sheet bend. And that way we get that extra length. So there's that. Find our center tie out, which is here. And I have a couple of ways I like to do this. I'm going to show you probably the most effective today. We use this knot, which is tying a bite in the center of a knot or in the center of a line that I can take back out. This is an alpine butterfly. So, take that, apply a little tension, check that out. Now we're plowing. Each. Check that puppy out. Worlds of room, space. I'm gonna play video games in there. We'll pick up some of this junk. We're gonna dress this a little bit. Show you what that looks like. And that's using my pre-cut line kit. I didn't have to cut anything. We're gonna get some good camera shots. So let's take a look. Throw that over there. Now. Now we're talking. Now that is a plow point. No diamond about that. You see that center tie out's got you up nice and proud. You get that space that you can work in. I could probably take that back stake, the bottom stake, and pull it out a little bit more, get me some more tension. Another thing I do is put my pack in there, especially in dry weather, push that up. But it gives me a lot of space, even in an eight by eight. A lot of space that I can do what I need to do 
as far as camping or crafting. I want you to take a look at something in here that I don't see discussed very often. You see that center and you can see those lines coming up and forming that triangle. That's the peak of that plow point. I can sit all the way back in there, even in an eight by eight. If it's not tall enough, I want it taller. The way I do that is I loosen this marlin spike, give myself more headroom down here and pull that up higher. I can make this a shallower shelter if I need to. So this is the plow point shelter that I've set up using my pre-cut line kit, using just my simple oil skin tarp, got my stakes, still have three of those bad boys left I could use for other projects. And as you can see, even with an eight by eight, plenty of room in here, plenty of space I can do whatever I need to do. So I like a plow point, I really like it. It's a versatile shelter. I could pull these sides in tight if I needed to. I usually do face a tree. It's just something that I like to do. I can tie things to this tree with my line kit and actually keep them up out of my way and organize my camp a little bit. Uh, especially in the winter time when I'm using an IOBE and the top of my uh, pack comes off, I'll go ahead and tie that to the tree and have a pocket. I have a couple of wax canvas pouches that I also use that I can just keep organized that way. Also, I can cook my breakfast or my coffee right there next to that tree, even if it comes to rain in the middle of the night. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this down, leave up just some essentials, pull these stakes, and we're gonna set up a lean-to in a similar fashion. I wanna speed that up a little bit for you guys. Now, last thing for my line kit, as this uh, ridge line didn't already have them on it, I'm going to tie two Prussics to tension this tarp. You can see I got that kind of hourglass going. Two Prussics, really quick.
So as you can see, now we've got our lean-to tied, ready to go. There's a little bit of weather actually sitting in. I'm gonna get out of here today, but I would have no problems camping under this tonight. A little loose on the back end, I'd probably tighten it up a little bit. But that, other than that, it's a pretty good looking shelter. Let's take a look. So as you can see, and we'll walk around it here, we've got that nice wide space we can lay. You can see that's my queen size wool there just in the corner of the frame. You can see there's plenty of space, probably for two people, even under this eight by eight. I got my back tied up nice and straight. And my ridge line, and I've still got my loop up there that I can get my stuff packed up in the morning. Pretty good looking little tarp set up. Only had to cut two pieces of bank line. And if I'd used my ridge line that already had those on it, my pre-made ridge line, wouldn't even had to break those. So guys, in a nutshell, that was a tip I wanted to share with you today. Using a quick line kit, just to eliminate all that cutting in camp, the destruction and consumption of your line kit that can be a little costly. I'm gonna break this camp down. We got some weather moving in. I'm gonna show you what it looks like as we take it down. I'm gonna take it down the exact opposite, starting with the ridge line. There we go. We're going to roll up and we're out of here. 